A shuffling in the shadows. A poltergeist with a passion for all things spooky. A spirit looking for a house to haunt. Many people around the world claim to have seen ghosts, even interacted with them. But do you believe in ghost stories? Let's find out just how real those wandering spirits really are. Phenomena don't come much more fascinating than paranormal encounters. The idea of ghosts, spirits, or the souls of the dead roaming our world has been around for thousands of years. And in that time, scientists have positively racked their brains trying to unravel the spooky white sheets that float in the hallway and discover the truth about ghosts. A 2022 poll found out that as many as one in five people claim to have experienced the paranormal in some aspect. This could be the terrifying sight of a long dead relative sitting in their favorite living room rocking chair, or something as simple as an eerie voice inside the head. But if these instances are so common in our society, ghosts are either real or there is some other explanation. The first evidence we're going to examine is sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis is essentially when someone has a nightmare while their eyes are open. Imagine you're in a deep sleep, you wake up, but your body doesn't get the message, and so your eyes are open but you can't move. You're now in a state between being asleep and waking, and so your dreams bleed over into reality. In this state, people have reported seeing deceased loved ones, frightening demons, intruding spirits, and even the Grim Reaper himself. It's not clear what causes sleep paralysis, though it has been linked with insomnia. While this certainly does not rule out the existence of ghosts, it goes a long way in explaining why so many people claim to have seen them in real life. But what if you've spotted a pesky poltergeist while you're up and active? There may be an explanation. It's known as pareidolia. Ever seen a face in the clouds? Or the shape of an animal hiding in the bark of a tree? Perhaps you've seen an electric socket in your house smiling at you. Pareidolia is the name we give to our tendency to see a specific, meaningful image in an otherwise random pattern. The reality you see is like a picture taken by your brain. Sometimes that picture has gaps, and so your brain fills them in. It's like when you hear the lyrics to a song, but you hear completely different words than what the singer is actually singing you may even believe these lyrics to be true for years until one night you learn the truth during an embarrassing evening of karaoke. It's as though your brain recorded the song for you to hear, the words weren't so cut and dry, and so your brain figured them out for you. Only your brain was wrong. The same thing can happen with images and the things you see. And it's why we sometimes see things like a movie star's face in our breakfast toast, or a dead person in the reflection of a steamy mirror. So could pareidolia be to blame when it comes to ghostly sightings? The answer is yes and no. Pareidolia could be the explanation behind some paranormal encounters. But of course, there is no way to rule out them all. Pareidolia as a phenomenon is just another maybe, much like the next curious culprit of those intruding spirits, carbon monoxide poisoning. The colorless, odorless gas is known to cause high rates of anxiety, depression, cognitive dysfunction, and psychosis. While it sounds like the premise of a particularly unimaginative horror movie, people do sometimes move into new properties, begin to experience the paranormal in terrifying ways, and then put it all down to an evil invader from the underworld. The reality, though, is often that low-level carbon monoxide poisoning is to blame. So if your house is feeling particularly haunted lately, it might be time to check the ventilation system. Now hold on a minute. If we have all this evidence from the spook septics, then why are ghosts still so prominent in our culture? Well, partly because none of this evidence actually proves ghosts do not exist. It simply offers alternative explanations for paranormal phenomena. Maybe the best way to understand why ghosts have such a stronghold on us is to go back into history. Specifically, the history of the one festival that celebrates all things to do with ghosts, Halloween. 
While we all love a little trick or treating, pumpkin carving and staying up late to watch scary movies, Halloween was once quite different from the family-friendly fun we know today, and it had a strictly serious focus on ghosts. Halloween's roots can be traced to around 2,000 years ago, when the ancient Celts, in the areas now known as Ireland, the United Kingdom, and Northern France, celebrated their annual festival Samhain every November 1st. It was essentially their version of New Year's Eve, as Samhain marked the end of the summer harvest, or the end of their year, and the beginning of a dark, dingy, and cold winter. In ancient Celtic times, this season was closely associated with death, and so the Celts themselves believed that on the night before the new year, a door between the worlds of the living and the dead was essentially open. Enter those awe-inspiring apparitions. October 31st became known as the day when those who passed on came back to haunt the living. It was a one-night-only show, but it wasn't all fun and games like it is today. The tricks often consisted of the ghost causing a ruckus and going as far as to damage crops. There was no candy being handed out in the street. Instead, people would actually sacrifice animals as their gift to the gods. It's not exactly the treat we had in mind. To make matters all the more creepy, people would wear costumes made from animal heads and skins. This is believed to be the way in which the Celts would disguise themselves from the ghosts, and by sporting the skins of dead animals, they were essentially blending in. People would also light bonfires in order to keep the sneaky specters away. Samhain got its first major update when the Roman Empire rolled into town and took over. The Romans then combined two festivals of their own with the Celtic tradition. The first was the rather fitting Feralia, a late October evening celebration where the Romans would honor their dead. The second was the day to honor the Roman goddess of fruit and trees, known as Pomona. The symbol of Pomona is an apple, so everyone who's ever wondered why bobbing apples are a thing on Halloween night you have the Romans to blame. Now, let's fast forward to the 9th century. By this point in Halloween's history, Christianity had spread into Celtic lands. It is believed that the church planned to replace Samhain with their own sanctioned holiday, and so they declared November 2nd as All Souls Day. This was celebrated in a similar vein to Samhain, and the day prior was known as All Saints Day, or All Hallows. The night prior to that, October 31st, then became known as All Hallows Eve, or as we now know it, Halloween. All Souls Day became a day in England when the less fortunate people from the poorer parts of town would ask for food as gifts. Families would give pastries to the beggars in exchange for the promise that they would pray for the dead. These pastries became known as soul cakes, and the practice of asking for these cakes became a tradition for children. Kids would go door to door looking for a tasty treat in what would become known as going a souling. This is the origins of trick or treating. Today, Halloween has as much to do with candy as it does to do with the paranormal. But there is no denying that the Festival of Frights has helped to keep ghosts at the forefront of our culture. Does our previously discussed scientific evidence also work as an explanation for ghost sightings in ancient times, though? There is no reason why it doesn't. But you'd think that as technology and science have progressed throughout the centuries, somebody would have found some answers. Maybe those sneaky, wandering spirits have been tampering with the evidence all along, because for all the spirit sightings attributed to sleep paralysis, hallucinations, and faulty carbon monoxide detectors, there may be many, many more that are simply spirits in disguise. Despite the best efforts of experts around the world, ghosts remain a mystery. But after hearing the evidence, do you think the dead really do walk or perhaps float among us?